Yo, it's Heavy Tread from Benedict Mud, and welcome to today's edition of No Bullshit News. So, I have an interesting story for you. So, but first, let's actually start with, with the headline from this email I got. The CBO report looks at effect of raising the federal minimum wage. So, I got a random email from a random financial advisor uh, asking me to give him my money to invest whatever anyway he attached a nice little article about the effect of a 15 15 dollar per hour minimum wage and that increase of what it would look like um, to the economy based upon what the cbo found now what is the cbo the cbo is the congressional Bo- budget office the congressional Bo- budget office is a nonpartisan agency that produces independent analysis of budgetary and e- economic issues to support the congressional budget process Okay, pretty benign, right? So, starts out saying, currently the 7.25 per hour minimum wage hasn't changed since 2009, the longest stretch with no federal increases since 1938, when the minimum wage was created. Several presidential candidates, as well as proposed House Bill HR 582, raised the Wage Act, which would raise the federal minimum wage. What effect? would the wage increase have on wage earners, families, employers, and the economy? So the CBO said in the report that basically the impact would vary with you know a $10 minimum wage, $12, as well as 15 And by 2025, that you could see the effect on employment as well as family income. So according to the CBO, for roughly 40 million wage earners, the $15 option would be most impactful boosting the wages of 17 million workers who would otherwise earn less than $15 per hour. Another 10 million workers earning slightly more than 15 bucks an hour might see their wages increase as well. But 1.3 million other workers would become jobless, according to the CBO's uh, median estimate. Also, there is a two-thirds chance that between zero and 3.7 million workers could be affected by a change in unemployment, meaning they'd be laid off. They would not be needed by their employers anymore. However, the number of people with annual income below the poverty threshold in 2025 would fall by 1.3 million. Maybe they'd all die of starvation or go to other countries with actual robust economies. Anyway, summing it up, here are the bullet points from the article. So the $15 an uh, an hour option would boost workers' earnings through higher wages, though some of those higher earnings would be offset by higher rates of joblessness. This is all a moot point, correct? Reduce business income and raise prices as higher labor costs are absorbed by business owners and then passed on to consumers. And reduce the nation's output slightly through the reduction in employment and a corresponding decline in the nation's stock of capital, such as building machines, technologies, basically any asset. Um, basically, every the labor force would become a huge liability is what that means. Okay, so based on these possible outcomes and the CBO's estimate of median effective employment, the $15 per hour option would reduce total real inflation adjusted family income in 2025 by $9 billion with a B. Okay, Dr. Evil. <sighs> so I'm, I'm not going to go any further. There are a couple other points here from this little uh, summary from this financial advisor. But l- let's think about the economy. And as somebody who's actually in the business world, We live in a cost plus economy, meaning you know what your costs are, whether they're material, uh, what your labor costs are, and subsequently what you need to include in in that, in your cost to cover your cost of your overhead, essentially, right? And then you mark it up with your profit, and your profit is how you reinvest in the company and hire more people, buy better equipment, get a better facility, uh, get better benefits, better time off, etc., etc., for your employees. So, forcing this $15 an hour um, minimum wage down people's throats is going to have dire consequences, especially somebody who's who's in the business world. And when I say that, I've been actively trying to hire people, especially last summer, when the economy was really, really uh, firing on on all cylinders. I was trying to hire people for months upon months, and we were paying at that rate. Entry level, as long as you could pass a drug test and wanted to learn a trade and want to learn a skill, we would pay you that. So it's baffling to me why we have to 
go down the path of Rashida Tlaib, who in fact wants us to go the $20 per hour, per, per hour route, which to me is just political posturing, right? And, and, and just, just um, pandering to her base. And, and basically getting in line with the, the far left side of the party, which she is already. I mean, she's boys, boys, buddies with AOC. So, you know, the only way you can truly, truly dictate, I think, from a command economy standpoint, dictate uh, what your labor force earns in, in a society is with the command economy. Do we live in the command economy? No. Well, let's look at one that actually exists. Let's look at China. Okay, that's great. So, so the premise of China started under the Marxist guise during the guise of Maoism, and Maoism stems from Marxism, correct? Which is a utopian ideal of of egalitarian society and equal distribution of wealth and all assets and capital, etc. Which is which is uh, uh, which is a farce, in my opinion. I think that's the best word to to explain it. So, anyway, getting on topic. So, if we want to control labor income and what the labor force actually earned, we need to live in a command economy. Look at the current command economy, the quintessential command economy in the present day. That's China, right? So, their workers are f- f- flinging themselves off of buildings, building iPhones. Actually, I'm recording this on an iPhone XR. Thank you, Chinese labor force throwing themselves off of buildings because because their government dictates wages, their government um, adjusts the currency, manipulates currency, st- steals uh, intellectual property, and it is supposed to be the, the epitome of a command economy and the last bastion of what was Marxism, which it's not. We all know the Chinese economy and society has evolved somewhat, but this utopian ideal doesn't exist anywhere and the only bastion of it is a complete farce my point is Tlaib, the socialists the far leftists who are are ramming this down people's throats it's going to turn our economy upside down if you can pass a drug test and are willing to work you can make much more than the minimum wage even I just hired and this is just me speaking personally about my personal experience as an employer I just hired probably about eight months ago a dude just out of high school with only a couple months experience in the food service industry and we are paying him much higher much higher than the federal minimum wage well that's my summary of this and my take on this article relative to the CBO's report on the effect of raising the minimum wage and, and raising the minimum wage in general. So we're going to go out with some riffage from a new tune I've been working on. Um, so check it out. Heavy Trev out. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.